so I am back at you with part two of my interview with my two favorite physicians in the whole wide world who are going to share <laughs> all the secrets. They're going to spill all the tea about working with APPs, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you're going to want to, you're going to, want to pay attention to this. If we haven't met yet, my name's Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner. I make content for nurses, NPs, and students. Welcome to the channel. What are your thoughts on working with APPs? I'm going to say APPs, that means Advanced Practice Providers, PAs, and PAs. Okay. okay. Physician APPs. Assistants and Nurse Practitioners. Right, right, right. What are your thoughts on working with them, blanketed? Um, well, this is my first experience working with them. I never worked you with them. You didn't have APPs in the... Residency or fellowship. Really? Mm -mm. So my first introduction... So you were like, what do I do with this person? What do I do with this person? <laughs> what do I do with this girl? <laughs> this person what do they do? Here. She wants But to honestly, I see it as delegation. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I can delegate work. We're leaders in the field. Yes. And so it's time. And that's actually been one of my weaknesses throughout yeah. residency mm. fellowship is that I would take so much on. I'd be like, oh, I can do yeah. this, I can do this, I can do that. Sure. Yeah. And uh, my, my attendings were always telling me, like, you need to learn to delegate more. And yeah. so I really, that resonated with me when I got here and I had APPs to work with. So I'm like, okay, well. I've heard one of our other physicians say, and I think he poses it brilliantly, that becoming a physician, working with layers of support underneath you is like becoming an executive director. Mm -hmm. And APPs, particularly nurses, when nurses go from working at the bedside to becoming NPs, making that leap to making some executive decisions, because in some ways I have to delegate too, not to the extent mm -hmm, you do. Mm -hmm. That's difficult for me because I'm not used to working right. in that role. So that's really hard for APPs, but as physicians, you're sort of more bred to do that. That is... Yeah, because you mm -hmm. work with residents, mm -hmm. you have interns, yeah. then you and have fellows, and then you have med students, mm -hmm. and you, you, know, you, you grow that type of mm -hmm. support behind you, mm -hmm. and so you're used to being... Okay, you know. so what do you think about working with APPs? Do you like having more support, or do you prefer doing your own kind of work? Mm, that's tough, because we work to get paid, Right, mm -hmm. and so a lot of the things that we do, to be honest, is RVU based, based and based on how much work. And so you. I am okay doing all the work because yeah, I'm gonna get paid for it. Yeah, no, I think I'm glad. I appreciate your honesty because mm -hmm. I think that this is a thought that many physicians have, and this is a little bit of bone of contention. It feels like an undercurrent of tension. Yeah, to me and. This is my first, I've been an APP now for almost five years, and this is the first year that I've worked um, in a situation where there is an incentive mm -hmm. for work-based mm -hmm. revenue. And it does sort of change the work dynamic. And so it makes me realize that people who work in institutions where it is solely that way, mm -hmm. there's an undercurrent of friction there mm -hmm. um, because there's sort of the battle for business. Yeah, mm -hmm. who wants and it can business. become very toxic in the yes. own group, you know, because yes. of the fact that And I can see people who aren't emotionally mature um, that that would certainly create an environment of uh, toxicness to work in. So I'm um, pretty laid back. I'm pretty sure you guys yeah. have realized that by now. So I don't get too stressed out over our views. I know that you guys are here to, to yeah. you know, help us and be part of the team. Mm -hmm. And so I'm definitely not looking at like, okay, I need to do this many, see this many patients, or right. I need to take these many away. I'm more along the lines that, you know, I have extracurricular activities, there's other things that I want to do with my life, so let's spread the wealth and yeah. have mm -hmm. the work be done. So yeah. I enjoy having APPs. I think that it's a great addition to the team and I wouldn't say otherwise. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a weird question and you, it's okay if you don't know the answer to it or if you've never heard this before. I just wanna get your general reaction on what you, your understanding of this is. If I said to you, um, describe to me what the scope of practice is. What is the governing scope of practice for an NP? Do you know what that is? Good question. It's not intended to be a trick question. I just, I generally wanna know your, what your understanding of it is and then I'll explain to you what it is. I would think it'd be whatever the attending you're working with wants you to do. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting answer. Scope of practice. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. I didn't know what a match was. <laughs> so um, I, my, my heart wants to tell me that it's, in French we say egaligo, which is equal to what an attending does. Um, but my mind tells me that that can't be. Okay. So the reason I bring it up is, well, let me tell you what it is first and I'll tell you why I bring it up. Mm -hmm. So 
as a nurse practitioner, we are governed, our scope of practice, what we are, what we are able to do, how much we are qualified to mm -hmm. do, right. is defined by our state board of nursing. So that governing body tells us, based on your education, your training, and your certification, you are qualified to do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, and this is where I think APPs get into a lot of diverse experiences in different institutions, is that it's incredibly great. So it leaves it to the interpretation of the institution or the physician mm -hmm. to make that delegation of what is okay and what is not okay. Mm -hmm. And so I see where, as physicians, um, if there's a bad experience, say they work in a practice where there are unqualified APPs doing work, or there are bad outcomes, or there's just a bad relationship, yeah. and then that physician goes to the board and says, well, it doesn't say that you can do this, then it sort of taints them towards all of them because there's no guidelines for them as a physician to say, this is what you can do. I've had uh, experiences this way in other, um, I guess, institutions where you can encounter uh, FNP working in the ICU yeah and that's because they weren't able to hire an acute care uh, because they were not available or just I, they couldn't they didn't get any couldn't or maybe yeah. I don't know if they pay less to mm -hmm. an FNP or mm -hmm. I don't know how it works some of it started because this um, delineation of scope didn't happen until like 2008 I think so there were FNPs who were working in the hospital up until 2008 and then they had to go back and get more right. advanced certification but many of them felt so like they were grandfathered, grandfathered in I see. I see. but they didn't have the education to support the certification to do what right. so it, it's and so that's when it becomes up to the physician yeah I think right because then right. it's so. like what how much do I trust you mm -hmm. you know I've been here two years and exactly this, I know exactly what I'm gonna do for each and every one of you the 12 yeah. or 14 that are here right um, I know who I can tell to go do an intubation without having to right. go to the bedside compared right. to the one that I have to be there for yes um, so it's just about up to the physician about what how much they um, believe in, yeah. in your training yeah right, at that point more than the institution or yeah. the board or and I, this kind of, the reason I asked this question is this I so I have a TikTok account and I put up some posts on there where I think so here's the thing about social media social media social media <laughs> a billion people with opinions uh, <laughs> and stop. when I put some things out there that I didn't think were controversial they became very controversial because a lot of physicians are anti-APP mm -hmm. and I really want to get to the root of why that is and that's when I started doing some investigation into scope of practice and and what the campus culture is at different places because so many nurses are going back to school right now yeah so mm -hmm. they're that's flooding the market that's right. everybody's burnt out from COVID mm -hmm. everybody is tired of being at the bedside they're tired of nursing administration mm -hmm. they're not everyone's done so they're flooding to school and then you know, going but, into the so workforce. What is the schooling though? What is the schooling? Too? That's the other problem. And this is the, the problem that many physicians brought up and I recognize it as a problem, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We need standardization of our schooling, for sure. Mm. There's no federal mandate for what is required from the schools. So there are basics, oh. there are basics. But like the clinical hours, mm -hmm. the Which classes you have many? to take, um, it's 500, I believe, okay. 500 clinical hours, mm -hmm. it's the minimum. Some schools provide that, some schools require much more than that. Huh. Some schools require it in certain fields, some require it in whatever you can find. Mm -hmm. huh. Some provide you with clinicals, some say go find your own, and it's basically someone shadowing somebody that they don't, I mean, they're hmm. not getting anything out of it. So, so it's not the, cookie cutter at It's all. not like your residency. I yeah. see. It's I see. not structured and governed across the boards. So you get wide variability, and some APBs come out very well prepared, and yeah. some come out with a piece of paper yeah <laughs> and the name yeah and some of them require x number of years as a nurse and some require no years as a hmm. nurse so you can be schools in, some of the schools yes so you can come out as a nurse practitioner and never having worked as a nurse that's wow. insane yeah hmm. yeah so well, that's the problem I all think. these yeah. nurses going into this field getting varying levels of training and yeah. then having yeah. varying levels of skills so yes. these physicians are like i don't know what i'm getting mm-hmm so and it's a concern. When you think about training in residency for three years, going to med school for four years, training and fellowship for right. three years, you have had you know, 10 lot. years of experience at that That's point. Right. Yeah, and it's you a know, lot of exposure. Right. Right. Patients and time and right. people. Uh -huh. and, right. Outpatient, inpatient. Everything. Right. You know. That's why I say, and I'm glad these guys are saying it, y'all, because, I mean, y'all know from all the videos I've put out there, I love you, my FNP friends. I, 
So many people want to go to school. They want to shortchange the system. They want to skip the process of build. You need to gain that nursing experience mm -hmm. so that you have a foundation to build on the advanced piece of that. Mm -hmm. Because the things I learned, I mean, here we are learning medicine without years of residency and years of medical school. So I'm relying very heavily on my nursing experience so I can jump that bridge to learning medicine and not practicing as a physician. I don't have the benefit of all the rigor that they had. Yeah, so I think point. that that's when NPs want to skip all that is detrimental. It's detrimental to the patient. It's uh -huh. detrimental to our reputation. Yes. And I highly discourage that. I mean, I get a lot of shade for it. I know you'll hate me for saying it, but it's, it's just not good, y'all. That experience mm -hmm. aids the studying. Yeah. And so without that experience, you don't really have a lot of gr to grasp onto. Sure. And it's just knowledge. Yeah. You have to be out on the field. You yeah. have to. You have to be in the arena. You have to. Gotta, so nursing, yeah. you have to be at the bedside yes. for a few years. Yes. I think they should require you to do, I, I thought they required you. you to do ICU for a year. Well, so it, it varies. So oh, wow. as an FNP, you can do direct entry. I see. As mm -hmm. a primary, there are like nine different specialties of nurse practitioners. There's women's health, there's psych. Um, it's like ortho. Yeah, there's a, well, mm -hmm. or, no, ortho is a subspecialty of either FNP or acute care. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So, but acute, acute care, so the adult JR acute care program does require nursing experience, but the minimum is only a year. A year, yeah. That's not a lot. Which is not a lot. No. Um, Amy, as a resident, do you feel, since you didn't have APPC residents, but mm. you've had them all along, yes. so how do you feel? Because in some respects, we work kind of the same. Same, yeah. Same role, different focus of and education and training. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Do that. you feel like there's tension between your group and my group? Do you feel like there's competition, that there's something that APPs are taking away from your education or anything along those lines? So I feel like there's competition if someone wants there to be competition. I feel like personalities will create that competition. Sure. But I sure. think I came into this because just like Dr. Charles, I've never worked with NPs or PAs or anything yeah. like that. So I came into it like, oh my God, this is like a resource for me to know what to do and not have to go bother the attending. So I saw it as like, oh great, like I can ask Pri how to do a central yeah. line with yada yada yada. But I know some residents feel that, wait, I've gone to school longer and yeah. I'm, I'm a doctor and mm -hmm. you know I should be telling them what to do. So I think the tension is created by the individual and not the resident. Does that kind of... Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually a very well-worded yeah. answer. You know? You're absolutely right because yeah. I see that as well. Yeah. And from our, from our perspective <laughs> as well. I don't know how like you guys feel working with us and it's, I guess the personalities are also different. It's the same on our end as yeah. well. I mean, I, I've worked with residents. So I, my first job ever was at Grady. I've worked with residents since day one. Mm -hmm. So I've always been very used to, I've worked at organizations where residency structure is very well delineated, working alongside APPs and it works beautifully. Mm -hmm. And working at places where there were not residents and they're brand new and it's a very infantile program and trying to sort out the ups and downs of it. And so people on, on my perspective feeling very, um, um, confused about how that's going to work out. Yeah. And concerned about, well, if we have residents, am I going to have a job? And many people right. say, do I have a job? They're sort of taking my job. This is my, you know, how are we going to all work together? Mm -hmm. um, but I never experienced that at level one training centers. It was all very well delineated. So I think it can run very beautifully. And I think it's a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. I, when I, now that we have residents at the institution where we are now, I learn so much more because the education level is way up yes. here. Right. Things yes. that you and I wouldn't talk about out loud because we both kind of already perceived that yeah. I know already. Yeah. Maybe I didn't know it, and you're telling her I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. Because now we have teaching rooms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I get a lot yeah. more out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I also do like feeling. I feel very rewarded to feel like a resource to you all. Yeah. And I love that your office is right outside ours, so you can stick your head in. Exactly. I, I enjoy it's really that a nice. lot, and I think that people with emotional intelligence. <laughs> are very comfortable with that. Right, and, and I think people need to understand, residents need to understand that you guys have more experience. Like for example, mm -hmm. you've been doing this for five years. I've done critical care, what, three, four months max. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely know way more than I do. And so right. it's nice to kind of have that, like, you know, backbone to go to if I need anything. Right. And I think, 
I think sometimes that ego for some residents kind of overpowers. Yeah. Just you know, let's just go ask her, and they'll yeah. they'll just that egotistical yeah. side will. That's the yeah. key word right there. The yeah. ego. The ego. Yeah. It, it yeah. definitely yeah. is, and I mean, a lot comments. of the anonymous people that made comments yeah. were residents, and it's and a lot I'm of like, women. Right, what is the threat? What is well, the th- what are what are what are you threatened by? I'm yeah. not a threat to you. <laughs> and and it, and it's, I think you'll probably get it more so with women. Because yeah. there's always we in medicine, so I know in medicine yeah. it's like, well, okay. I'm the doctor, yeah. I'm the doctor, blah blah blah. Yeah. So it's it's the woman to woman yeah. kind well, of relationship, yeah, and not being catty. And so, what would you say are qualities of a good APP? Um, Communication. Taking yeah. one, like overstepping <laughs> the boundary of the shared team experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, the big thing is this community. I was gonna say yeah. feedback, just being respe- receptive to feedback, yeah. so they can grow. Because um, you're, you, I mean, you guys work with different attendings all the time, so yeah. getting that feedback and kind of, I think each attending has their own way of doing things and just kind of vibing with that attending yeah. for those couple of days and, yeah. you know. But I know that can get hard sometimes too because you guys, I know I hear that a lot. Well this person does it this way, so I have to do it this yeah. way this week, and then the next week you're doing it another way because another person does it another way. But you know, I, I think that's just qualities of being a good worker. It doesn't matter what field of work you go yeah. into, you've got to be adaptable. Yeah, right? you Just like adaptable. you're adaptable mm-hmm. depending on what APP you're with. Yeah, yeah. APP, exactly. You right. yeah. I think that's, I mean, I get it, it's a hassle, yes, because one week you're more autonomous and one week you're, you're less not, autonomous. Yeah. Yeah. And one week's yeah. more but like honestly, evidence. it doesn't really bother me too much. Yeah. And I think that, especially when you're interviewing y'all, when you're interviewing and looking for jobs, having that quality of being adaptable, that's key. That's huge, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. In any, in any state of this profession, you have to adapt to situations really quickly. Sure. Fast. Things change sure. really, really fast, um, so that's important. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And Agreed. the personality has to be good. I mean, I mean it's got to be on point. The three yeah, of us are time. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Cute. No. Get to the gossip. <laughs> yes. Get to the good stuff. I'm ready to spill the tea. Let's spill it. I, I spill so much tea, I need the kettle. Come on. Get a mop. <laughs> and that's a whole nother video. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm your doc. I'm your doctor. doctor. <laughs> uh, are you my nurse? Exactly. You <laughs> change that. You're so good. You're so good at this. And the same. Is that Brie, by the way? That she is. You guys Brie have one of the, the Brie. Look, dog. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? No, she did not. No, did you do it on purpose? No. <laughs> oh it's just good. It's good cheese. Okay. Bree is good cheese. Bree's yeah, my favorite. Can't legit. Legit. Oh, Bree, all the Bree's are my favorite. <laughs> cheese or not. <laughs>